Celostno gledano je za življenje najboljša država ravno Slovenija, je prepričan naš sogovornik, pisatelj, predavatelj, novačarni, ki že eno Slovenko že dobro desetletje živi v Kamniku. Zakaj torej Slovenci v lastni državi najdemo več slabih kot dobrih stvari, zakaj raje kritiziramo, kot da lastno državo večkrat pogledamo skozi prizmo kvalitete bivanja v drugih državah in raje jamramo, kako je pri nas vse slabše kot drugi. Vsem tem torej v današnjem pogovoru. Gospod Čarni, lepo pozdravljeni. Hvala za vbilo. Lejte, slovenologija, torej življenje v najboljši deželi na svetu in potovanje po nje je naslov knjige, ki združuje neko spominsko esejistiko, vaše osebno in tudi zelo uporaben vodič po deželi, ki ste jo vzeli za svojo, jo posvojili. Če bi kakšen slovenec napisal knjigo s takšnim naslovom, bi ga marsih kdo pogledal po strani in ga celo vprašal, ali jaz te bojo vse v redu? Ja, po moje zdaj je bolj prepričljivo, če en tujec iz zaželene države, kot jaz sem iz Amerike, reče, da Slovenija je daleč najboljša država na svetu in to ne rečem sam, da bom všečno, ampak res sem študiral, raziskoval in sem živel v eni osmi države, za poskuse, kako bi bilo življenje. In za me Slovenija ima najboljše kvalitete življenje glede cene življenje. Torej, jaz včasih šalim, smo kot špar, najboljše razmerje med kakovosti on ceno. Dobro. Ampak res se da lepo živeti za normalno zaslužek in to pa je zelo pomembno. V drugi državi se da super živeti, če orang zaslužeš za normalne ljudje, Slovenija ima zelo visoko kvalitete življenja. Nek dober standard, torej tudi zdravo in tako naprej, da ni to... Tako. Za merčani to je čudo, koliko imamo socialno pokrito življenje. Vem, da slovenci smo navajeni. Razvajeni. Razvajeni mogoče, ampak navajeni tudi, da recimo državo pokrije stroške za vrtac in za zdravstveno zavarovanje. Za američani to je neverjetno. In če mačken moramo plačati, tudi je relativno toliko nizko, da američani sploh ne verjamejo, da je taka država obstaja da je toliko skrbi za državljane kot Slovenija. Pa da je vaši reklami bi pričakovali kar navala američanov, ki bodo želeli biti tukaj. Vendar le, ne sami ste večkrat omenili in opažite, da imamo slovenci res probleme z iskanjem dobrih stvari v tej lastni državi. Človek dobi občutek, da je to, da si pri nas ponosen na neko kulturo, kot nek znak, da si malce mentalno inferioren, če sem malce simična, no? Ja, je vse relativno. In če nisi živel v tujini, ne veš, koliko je dober doma. In mislim, da je pomembno, da gledamo, se tuji uči. So slovenci, ki so selili v drugi državi in so prišli nazaj, razumejo, koliko je super tukaj. Za mi tujci, ki smo prišli do Slovenije in so par tisoč ekspatrioti tukaj, vsi smo tako navdušni, da ne morate verjeti in bolj navdušni kot vsak slovenec. Pa vam nekdo daj očitev to domoljubje? Vam nekdo rekel, vi ste pa preveč domoljubni bili? Ja. Ja? Poznam besedo, ampak ponavad ta besede se uporablja s politično ali pa glede vojna. In jaz, mene nič ne zanima politika, še manj vojno. Jaz pa sem navdušen na kulture, koliko so prijazne ljudje, narava, šnob, spotica, pršut. Potem, če gledaš se toke oči, odrežemo ven politike, kakšna najboljša država ne obstaja. Zdaj, vi z mano govorite praktično tekoče slovensko. Ne, ampak dobro desetletje ste tukaj. Kako težko je v človeku živeti v Sloveniji, če ne zna našega jezika? Ste imeli tukaj tudi v Kamniku, kjer vendar le ni prestolnica. Ste imeli kakšne težave? Kako dobro bi rekli, da je po vašem desetletju naša slovenščina? Jaz bi rekel tako, da se da čist lepo živeti v Sloveniji samo v angliščino in to je lahko problem ker slovenci toliko lepo govorijo angliško, da ni treba se potruditi sploh, če že viš v Ljubljani. Če greš malo izven Ljubljani in hočeš globje iti v kulturi in bolj bogato družabno življenje, potem treba se potruditi. Ampak jaz nikoli nisem študiral, torej vsak fraz ima svoj gramatično napaka. Samo vk torej. Ja, čist sem vk in nimam pojma za končnice, nisem nikoli memoriziral. Torej vse poobčutek, ampak Če me razumete, pa pa meni vsem, če imam malo kot grupač s onim. Ne, razumevanje je dobro. Tudi mogoče prej ste omenili, ne, slovenci smo nagljeni k temu, da so govorniku, da se mu prilagodimo. Tudi zaradi naše zgodovine, ne, večina nas govori tudi hrvaško, angliško, številni so vešče italijanščine, nemščine. Kako pomembna je za slovenca jezikovna kultura? Ste imeli, da je občutek, da ste izključeni, da je ste v mestu, ne, tukaj pa ja. Kako smo navezani na svoj jezik? Imamo ta občutek, da moramo govoriti, ali smo pač, ja, če pa se bomo prilagodili, ne? 
moč. Že... Jaz mislim, da zaradi spoštovanje mm-hmm. do domovina, če hočem živeti v Sloveniji, moram se potruditi saj to. Ampak nismo vsak za jeziki, če jedni ima težave, to pa čist razumem. In tudi, če, če imamo kakšne napake, um, pomembno je, da ljudje čutijo, da hočeš probati. Ja. To je najbolj pomembno. In ponavad so vse navdušne, če saj rečeš, ne vem, hvala, pa pa juhu. Če posebej, če američan to reče. Ja, to, to. Um, to je zaradi spoštovanja in tudi ne dobiš celoten pogled na države, če ne razumeš saj malo. Mhm. In za me je lažje klepetat, kot Prisno brat izkušnje, recimo. Ne, verjetno, ja, absolutno. Ampak jaz berem recimo za preživitje, mhm. pišem kot pet let star otrok, ampak za klepetanje in za nastopi ni problema. In sem slišal, da bi bilo manj zanimivo, če bi pravilno govoril. Torej, boljše, če ohranem um, napačen uh, noaščina, ta noaščina. varijant. Ne. To so vam tudi žena reče, da je to noaščina. Ja, ja, ja. Ona iskam, Mogoče je, je manj šarmanten, če živiš s mano vsak dan za deset let, mogoče kot uh, je za en nastop ampak ja, ona preživi s mojo čudno slovensko. Ampak kako pa pri otroku to potem kombiniraš? Ja, doma jaz ja. govorim skor zključno angliščino, Aha. ampak otroci so dvojezični Sredi, so. in um, mešamo ena fraza, uporabljamo uh, besede v eni frazi, da pride prav, nima veze, kateri jezik je. In kaj vam je recimo pri učenju, pa usvajanju jezika, tudi so govorniki povzročali največ preglavic? Puh, po moje, da... da sogovorniki um, zrikajo, da bomo se razumel. Torej, vprašanje so bolj na normalni način. Recimo, je bilo težko, pakrat sem bil na intervju na RTV, ti ste bolj resni in sem komaj lovil. Um, ampak ponavad, če, rej, če govorim o svoje osebne izkušnje ali pa kultura ali pa te stvari, da sem navajen, uh, uh-huh potem ni problema. Če govorim, bo strok in jaško, kot iz moji področje od plečnika ali pa kraj umetnina ali pa umetnost zgodovino, raj šaltam v angliščino. Ker je pač bolj specifično. Ja, sem bolj verjetno. subtilno, jaz sem kar kladivo ali slovenčni in to je v redu, <laughs> ampak če je nekaj posebno, da moram uh, povedati, specifično, angliščino ne, ja. je lažje. Ja, no tudi mogoče, lejte, zdaj umuči vse bolj pereče znova migrantske problematike. Ne? Kako vi ocenjujete? kot zunanjo pa zavalec, pa zdaj tudi že slovenec, na nek način to strpno slovenco do posameznikov, ki prihajajo iz drugačnih kulturnih okolij in si želijo tukaj ostvariti dom. Včas je človek dobil občutek, da do enih smo strpni, do drugih pa ne, ne? Ja, jaz bom rekel, da nimam dost um, izkušen, da nisem sploh študiral ta. To je dobro vprašanje, ampak je bolj polično vprašanje. Mi imamo v Kamniku, recimo naš sosed je um, družine iz Serije, so uh-huh. prišli ni v najnovejši val, ampak več kot deset let ja. nazaj. Imajo tri otroci vsi rojeni v Sloveniji, govorijo slovensko, imajo super restauracije tukaj in so dokaz, da ni treba imeti strah od ljudi iz druge kulture, ker so čist super. Tudi okolje je verjetno sprej. Ja, absolutno. Um, integrirani, ampak ne ne da so razstopili, da so samo slovenci in to pa tudi ni nič zanimivo, ampak da vsi smo prijatelji in sosedi in um, spoštujemo druge navade. Spoštovanje. To je edin stvar, da imam za povedati o tem, ker drugače bolj politično vprašanje. Zagotovo, ampak vendar le, ne, ne moremo mimo tega, da neke ljudi, recimo tudi zdaj, ko smo videli te migrantske valove, ne. Ne, po eni strani smo bili zelo odprti do Ukrajincev, ja. potem pa situacija v Afganistanu, ki se je tudi ja. zaostrovala, tudi zdaj konec koncev v Iranu, kar se dogaja. Ja. To niso nepomembne stvari, ne? Verjetno, tudi sami to opazujete. Vsej, ne, ja. ne govorim zgolj o političnih predritlji, ja. ampak kako ste to videli, Slovenci? Ja. Ja, jaz sem čutil, da so nekaj države, da so recimo zaželeni, ja. kot a, anglofonski države. Torej, vi se niste nikoli počutili? Ne, nikoli. Ne, Zmeraj ne sem se čutil dobro došel, ampak tudi sem... Um, tak človeka, da se vržem noter in upam, da bom plaval in meni vsem, če ne. In čisto odprto in zelo socialno. Torej, odvisem, kakšen tip človeka si. Um, če se potrudiš s jezikom, mislim, da pomaga. Uh-huh. Ampak tudi razumem, če, če bi jaz pršel iz eno drugo manj zaželene države, mogoče bi bilo reakcija drugačna, ampak recimo iz Amerike, Anglije, Kanade, iz taj področje Slovenci so odprti in navdušni in samo dobri ideji iz te države. Slovenci ponavad so bolj navdušni na Ameriki, kot sem jaz. Jaz nisem najbolj navdušni. No, vse smo tudi videli, ne? pa tudi naša prva dama, ja. nekdanja, ne, ja. zdaj, da ja. Um, torej, 
preden greva do teh vaših šlangov, kjer ste tudi prvo damo omenjali. Najprej, poučevali ste tudi v Rimu, kot najboljši sistem študija pa označujete vendar le Združene države Amerike. Kaj po vašem mnenju manjka slovenskemu študijskemu procesu? In moj izpravljenju v edukacijskem sistemu, sem bil bodo študent in profesor v nekaj različnih sistemu. In tudi, ki sem vsega vsega v slovenskem sistemu, in sem vsega vsega od študenta, sem vsega 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 vsega, ker sem vsega 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 This is a very important difference. A lot of the old school, now mostly retired professors here, give this sense that it's your privilege as a student to be in my presence and don't even think about asking a question because I don't have time for it. And you better get it the first time and memorize what I say and spit it back out at me when there's a test. And that is demonstrably not a good system in terms of learning and also creating a dynamic. One of the things that's interesting is for many years I've taught a private course run by University of Ljubljana mm -hmm. for professors, teaching them how to write in a more engaging way. And even professors don't want to ask questions of other professors. And in the American system, about 25% of your grade is based on class participation. If you sit there silently and get a straight A's on your tests, you won't get a good grade. So it forces people to engage, participate, and you have to ask questions. Maybe that's a good point. I would like to point yeah. out that, you know, in Slovenia, um, I'm the kind of person that I really like to ask questions, but when you come to this educational system, mm. you feel that um, it's kind of forbidden to ask wrong question. You're yeah. quickly like considered like, oh, why are you asking this, you know? But in process of learning, we are having different questions and we don't know everything. Yeah. But here, this, how how you think this is connected to Slovenia identity as the whole, um, like the Slovenian soul? Well, th there's a couple ways to answer that. One is that um, I think historically Slovenia has always kept a humble, hardworking, low profile, mm -hmm. both at a national level and in terms of individuals. This is dating back to, you know, Austro-Hungarian times. Of course, yeah. um, and the idea of being pridan mm -hmm. is a mixed blessing. Especially for women. Especially Pridna. for Pridna, yeah. Pridna, oh. Pridan, sounds positive and when yes. people say it they mean it in a positive way but it basically means that you're ubogliu, that you are obedient and doing what's asked of you without complaining about it and mm. that's not necessarily a good thing so i say that to my dog breathe and see <laughs> but i wouldn't say it to my kids because i feel like being a little bit nepridna or asking provocative questions if they're thoughtful is a good thing and being too pridan means you're not thinking for yourself and you're not taking opportunities that might be there for you. Tudi nekega poguma, ne, ne, da se odločiš na nek način, ja, ta pridnost pomeni, da delujemo kot nam narekujejo v staljeni vzorci. That's right. And that's employers and bosses and feudal princes love this. This is good. But if you're looking at at a familial level, if you're looking at a like familial level or if you're looking at students who you want to encourage to think outside the box, then it's not a good quality. And I see that with, when I teach professors and students, that the idea is that they, I asked, are there any questions? And everybody looks down at the floor. And then I say, you're not allowed to leave unless I have three good questions. And the professors are still looking down at the floor. Experienced professors. Experienced professors who are really brilliant, far more than I am. But they don't get, you know, na evropski ravni ne dobijo razpiso, ravno zaradi tega, to ste sami omenjali. This is actually the reason that I have this course, is we have brilliant professors, but they write in a way that's very dry. And there's a fear that I see, especially with the older professors, that if I write in a way that's too interesting, people won't think I'm smart enough. This is a self-esteem issue. I see this also with um, writing that tries to be intellectual, like essays, um, and it's really silly. The sign of good writing internationally and in the Anglophone world is the ability to convey the most complicated things. directly with them, right? Yeah, you gotta be Zmochten, but also the ability to convey the most complicated things in a clear, simple way that everybody can understand. That's the sign of a good writer and a good professor. And if you read something that's kompliciran... You don't understand that it's like 
But you know, somebody who doesn't have the experience says, oh, I'm so stupid because... That's the yeah, thing. An yeah. American would never read an article and not understand it and think, oh, I'm so stupid and the writer's mm. so smart. They're going to think, this writer is such a bad writer that he can't write in a way that I can understand. Or this guy is so dumb that he doesn't understand his own material, so he's writing around it in confusing ways. And that's the main difference I see. That said, the younger generation of professors, they all understand this. Mm -hmm. But um, you see who stays after my first lecture at University of Ljubljana. Mm -hmm. First, there's like 60 people. <laughs> and then the ones with long beards decide this is not for them. And the people who are my generation and younger totally understand this different approach. And, and it's... Um, Samo umevno, so it's Lahko not a problem. Rečeno, tudi sama delim podobne izkušnje z različnih strani medijev in tako naprej. Um, mogoče že se odzakneva, ne, ravno izobraževanje in sistema. Prihajate iz New Heavena, ja. um, ravno tam je tudi sedeš prestižne univerze, mm -hmm. Yale, Ivy League in tako mm -hmm. naprej, skratka, sama prestižna zvaneča imena. Kako da se niste odločili, da bi tam obiskovali to univerzo? Pa verjeto tudi profesor na tej univerzi se strudil približati. Ja, yeah. um, I thought about going to Yale, but I didn't get in. Ah, okay. I was a good student, but not special. And you really have to be not only get perfect grades and perfect grades on standardized SAT tests mm -hmm. and be you know a virtuoso violinist and a great football player to get into schools like that so I didn't get in I applied to 12 universities and I got into three of them and I went to a good school called Colby College but it was mm -hmm. not at the top level I did teach at Yale so oh, and my parents there oh. did as well and there was one semester where all three of us were teaching there um, your but, parents yeah my parents were both teachers there oh, okay. as well um, but uh, that was the only way I got in. I had to come in as a teacher. They wouldn't have me as a student. That's, that's, um, that's a highway <laughs> to the Yale. It's a different approach, yeah. Uh, torej, um, lejte, ne, predmest ste se odločili za življenje v Kamniku, kot sva že dejala z vašo ženo, ki je slovenka iz okolice Kamnika, ste se veliko oselili, ne. Uh -huh. Ste se prej rekla Amerika, Italija, Anglija, mesečno menjali kraje. Uh -huh. uh, ne, tudi celo države. Vas po vsem tem, recimo, zdaj, ko ste vse te stvari zamenjali, še vedno vleče kam drugam ali menite, da je Slovenija vaš dom? Ne, jaz, jaz sem poskusil življenje v ene osme lokacije in za me Slovenija je daleč najboljše in jaz bom tukaj ostal. Uh, to lahko rečete tako? Z, zmira, ja. In se je počutim bolj kot slo, kvazi slovenec kot, in kvazi merčan, torej sem dva kvazi. <laughs> um, to res uh, ima čist vse kar jaz bi potreboval sploh za mlade družine. Za vzgoj otrok, verjetno? Ja, je odlično, odlično. Jaz ne se predstavljam boljše država um, za, za življenje s otrocem. Torej, bi rekli, tisto, kar pri vas prevlada, je ravno to, da, so, da je standard pri vzgoju otrok, torej kvaliteti življenja, ja. to je tisto, kar je najboljše, kako čeprav razumem. Um, recimo za... Um, early childhood education mm -hmm. kot vrci je isto dobro kot v Ameriki. Ampak v Ameriki bi treba orang plač vrt ja. in tukaj skor nač. Ko gledamo recimo gimnazija ali univerze je, je drugo. Jaz bi rekel, da lažje dobit um, ni samo, ni vprašano kvaliteta, ampak bom rekel takole. In the American and British system, encouraging engagement from the students by making sure that lectures are interesting mm -hmm. and fun is standard. So it's much easier for students of all backgrounds to get excited about going to class. Whereas here, you have to be self-motivated because in general, it's quite dry, although the material is just as academically rigorous. It's just the presentation. It's like, do you want to have just as rezek or you want as rezek with lots of sauces on top? And mm. the American system has lots of sauces. Got it. Um, ko zunani sodelave spišete tudi za več revi, ne, to je The Washington Post, Guardian, Atlantic in druge, ne, to so zveneča imena, mm. kakorkoli obrneva. Uh, poznate slovenske pisce, raziskovalce, avtore, veste, kako dobri pisci so. Kako teže pa vaši izkušnji uspeti v tujini s svojimi članki? Če ne prihajaš iz tega angliško govorečega območja ali tudi francoske, skrati z območja, ki ima veliko govorcev, yeah. vse slovenci znamo dobro pisati, ampak vendar le ni to isto, ne? Um, it I'll say it like this, it's complicated even if you're a well-known name in Anglophone world to, mm -hmm. to get these publications. Uh, the publications are very competitive. Um, there's a lot of luck involved, a lot of editors who just have people they like to write for them. And if you're writing cold, it, it's connections. It's not strict nepotism because it's usually not someone who's friends with them, but they get writers who they mm -hmm. like and they go back to them. Um, and I 
there were years where I was writing 10 to 12 articles for foreign magazines a month. Mm. Mm. Okay. And I spent far more time chasing editors, even if they'd already said yes to me, than I did actually writing the articles. And that's why I decided it was too tiring. So the freelance journalism, it can work, um, but it's kind of exhausting and you have to have a lot of uh, tentacles flying everywhere. Ampak kako teže je recimo za nekoga, ki je iz našega okolja, ne? Sploh priti v nekaj takega je to kar nekaj praktično nepredstavljivega, ne? So if you come from a different context like Slovenia, sometimes there are advantages because magazines do want people locally based to cover things. Um, and we have some hugely successful examples, but they tend to be the exceptions to the rule, but they're also the ones that try the hardest. Like Boschan Vidimshuk has been in every publication you can imagine. Um, my friend Mika Mazzini, we wrote a book together recently. Um, he decided he wanted to write for The Guardian and he took a couple of rounds yeah. of pitches yeah. until he finally got a piece in. So a lot of it has to do with coming up with lots of ideas and being relentless in your approach and it can work and you have to spin it to your advantage. You have to say, I'm in a location that you don't have anyone else who can write about and then it's a plus. If you're trying to write more generally, they're going to go for someone who's probably a native speaker who they're already familiar with. Yeah. V enem izmed intervjuje ste dejali, da se Slovenci zelo najradi promovirajo. Tudi tam, kjer bi se lahko, tudi v turizmu, um, ne vemo točno, kaj je naša ciljna publika, yeah. menite, ne, ne znamo se predstaviti. Svetovali ste torej v radu za komuniciranje, turizmu Ljubljana. Se vam zdi, da so se kaj izboljšali po tistem? Kaj ste jim svetovali? Yeah, um, I, I collaborate with STO. I host the official English language interview for uh, mm -hmm. podcast for Slovenia Tourism. Um, and, uh, and they do a really good job. They're doing a, a really good job, especially in the last six or seven years, of getting the word out. Um, and that people have a positive general association with Slovenia. Um, Luka Doncic is by far our best ambassador. Course, yeah. And everybody has this sense of Slovenia being clean, safe, green, charming, easy to navigate. So that's good. Whether they're coming in great numbers, mm -hmm. the pandemic interrupted that, but yes. they, they were, people were coming to Bled in Ljubljana in numbers that were so large that they didn't want any more. They wanted people to stay capacity. longer and okay. spend more money, okay, but they didn't yeah. want more by numbers. Yeah. So that means they're doing a really good job. Um, I think the next thing to do is encourage people to spread elsewhere mm -hmm. in Slovenia Pre beyond. Kure, Nimo, exactly. Nimo, right? And so trying to, people have an association, okay, I'm already in Europe. I'm going to Vienna or Venice or the Dalmatian coast, I'll go to Ljubljana and Bled. And we have to expand what they think of as interesting things in Slovenia so they can come here and we should be promoting they should spend a whole week here and explore a lot of different things. So that would be a way forward. But I think we're doing a really good job on that front since, but that's in tourism. In other aspects, we're not as good. In which aspects we're not so good? I think this, um, there's a nervousness of self-promotion mm. that I see at an individual level but also collectively at a national level and there's no shame of um, announcing things you're good at or superlatives if you have the best the first the biggest um, we have a tendency to we don't say Slovenia first yeah and Slovenia is the best we don't say yeah this. it's just not built into the sociology into the character. I also understand that and they'd rather have other people say it well that's actually a good approach if you're a little shy to say it yourself maybe it's more convincing if foreigners come and say the same thing because foreigners are all coming yeah. and saying it that's one of the reasons I'm uh, so often talking about Slovenia in foreign media because it's easier for foreigners to say if a foreigner likes it I'll probably like it too because of course the Slovene is going to say it's great. Slovenes don't want to say it's great, so we'll let the foreigners do it for them. To se mi zdi tudi meni dober korak, ne, zato našo sramežljivost, oziroma na sploh v družbi je neka taka fama, če tako rečem, da je kar naroba, če se preveč pohvalimo, ne, da to je po Sloveniji kar prepovedano. Pa zdaj mogoče, ne vem, če greva še na meni tak zadnjo etapo, ne, če so v Sloveniji ni kar ne bilo v ZDA zelo ljubo, kar je neka zadeva, ki vam mogoče najbolj manjka v tem našem okolju. I think, I think it's um, this alfa osebnosti. Mm. I think that's the thing that Slovenia generally and Slovenes in particular could do well with more of. There are relatively few Slovenes who really, we say, take the bull by the horns and say, I've got an idea, I'm going to push it through and you should all pay attention to this. Part of that is we social. We don't say this, we are like... Hmm. Part of it is also the, the economic system here is sort of halfway to pure capitalism, but 
there's some financial risk in you setting up a company here. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the US, you just start doing something. If you make money, you pay taxes. If you don't, you haven't lost anything really and you close it and move on to the next idea. Whereas here, there's, there's some um, friction on the way to just trying something new that might work. Tudi nepredvidljivost davčnega okolja, konec koncev, kako bi to, zanimivo je, neravno, zdaj spet vidimo, kar naprej se spreminja, praktično pod vsako vlado in politiko se te davčne politike spreminjajo in številni intuici investitori odhajajo tukaj, ker pravijo, da je to nestabilno okolje. Kako vi vidite, verjetno, ste to iz te pozicije? Zame Slovenije je davčni raj. Je najboljše, da je mogoče razen, recimo, Monako. Ampak bo majčken manj super duper v novo leto, ker najboljši stvar na svetu so normirane stroške. To tudi bi vsi solili sem zaradi normirane stroške. Daj bojo spremenili malo in bo majčken manj idilično, ampak je še zmeraj tisveno boljše kot v druge države. In ko gledaš, ko dobiš iz davke, jaz se veseljem plačam davke, ker v Ameriki sem plačal in nisem imel občutek, da nič nisem dobil, čist nič. Pa se vseeno ne plačam. V ZDA, če recimo tiste public schools so ponavad ni toliko dobri in lahko so fizično navarne, ampak mi plačamo vse davkami, ampak če lahko, če imaš finančno možnost, ne bi poslali tvojo troci tam, bo poslali na predrage privatne šole. Tukaj imamo tako dobro, da jaz res se veseljem plačam davke, ampak tist normalne stroške upam, da vlada bo spremil menje, mogoče od naslednjo vado nazaj, ker to je bilo toliko idilično, ampak je še zmeraj kar dobro, torej ne smem jamrati. Torej, že skoraj preveč idilično na tej idilični točki, mislim, da v tem prazničnem času je prav primerno, da zaključimo spoštovane gledalke, bravke, bravci, gledalci. Hvala vam za pozornost in hvala vam, gospod Nova Čajerni, za vaš čas in tudi, kar ste danes povedali za naš medij. Super.